Hey guys, this is a video explaining the Unit 4 DBQ and the skill exercise attached with it, which is that blank planner document that I want you guys to use on exam day. Before going over what you see on the right of your screen, I'm going to talk a little bit about the process as a whole, I can't talk, and then the actual DBQ document itself. So just to reiterate what you're trying to do in this DVQ, let make this a little bigger here. You are going to have an intro paragraph. Turn this music down some. That intro paragraph will have contextualization and a thesis. Obviously, the context comes before the thesis. They just the AP puts the rubric to look like this. Okay. Uh, the thesis, because there's only a five document set of documents, is probably just going to have two parts to it. So what I mean by parts, let's look at the DBQ question today. Evaluate the extent to which Portuguese transformed maritime trade in the Indian Ocean. So if there are only five documents, you're looking for a lot of transformation or a little, or lack thereof. Those are going to be your two categories. So whenever you go to prompt for this year, you want to think about trying to subdivide the documents into probably two categories. You can do three, go for it, but two is probably going to be good enough because that will be an extent. They do transform or they don't. Okay. So when you go through the documents, you want to kind of analyze them with that in mind. Okay. So looking just at <clears throat> thesis and contextualization, the way you can start to work on that with this document is at the very top of it, there we go. Where it says brainstorm historical evidence that you know about the prompt. If I was going to be writing about everything I could remember about the Portuguese and the Indian Ocean, in my mind, I remember Vasco da Gama. He's the one that came around and discovered, back for lack of better word, India in 1498. I remember that this is the era of exploration. Spanish are going one way, the Portuguese are also going that way. But then there's a treaty where the Catholic Church splits the world between the Spanish and the Portuguese. The Spanish, most of the new ones, Brazil, where the Portuguese already were, and the Portuguese get Asia. And the Indian Ocean is part of Asia, so that gives you the context of why they're there. They're going to be the first in the Indian Ocean to establish what are going to be called factories, where the goods are stored. The trade goods, they're not producing, they're storing, because the word factory comes from the idea of the European factor. Factor is a representative. It would be in that Indian town, per se, not the warehouse, the factor's residence, factor's place, the factory. Okay? And the Portuguese are the first to do this, and they're called trading posts. Why were they able to do it? Because the Chinese stopped. It was Zhang Hao voyages in the 15th century. And I know that when the Portuguese entered into the Indian Ocean trade networks that have existed for all time, basically, because of their technology, they were able to force merchants to purchase what they call a cartas, or a letter, carta is letter. And that letter was a license that allowed them to trade, almost like a hall pass. And in exchange for that hall pass, the Portuguese got 20% of the trade. So the Portuguese aren't hauling anything. The Portuguese are patrolling and making sure that all these belt voyages are licensed so they can make money. Okay. So next thing I would do, if this was the real DBQ, and while we're thinking about it, I'm, I'm going to tell you guys this on the Zoom. It takes place Thursday if you, if you show up. But if you don't, I've been working with College Board on some practice 
DBQs, the five document variety, and they're gonna keep them pretty short. Each document is gonna be small because they realize it's gonna take you guys longer to read, not longer to read, but with only a 45 minute time period to write. They don't want your focus to be so much on reading for too much so then you can start to write. Let me move my picture out of the way here. So this picture can also help you. Not all the documents are due to keep on how to picture it, but that can help you with the context. Okay. So before I even start thinking how to answer the question, I'm going to analyze every document. And the right side first, that's the blue. So what I get from this document is that it's explaining how wealthy Indian Ocean trade was. That's what I have written on the right here. And there used to be a lot of independent Muslim merchants. But most of these Muslim merchants have left once the Portuguese arrived. So notice I put this supports the idea that the Portuguese trans transformed trade. So I'm trying to find the extent to which the Portuguese transformed the Indian Ocean trade in zone. I want to make sure I note that this is a great extent. They support it. It's transformed. Muslim merchants have left. Second document, an advisor of the King of Portugal. When I kind of note some things about this, how does this relate to transforming trade? What this document shows, document two, and I have this kind of highlighted here, is that the Portuguese have a strong rival, the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire is a Muslim trade empire, or Muslim empire engaging in trade. And that's really always been the case in the Indian Ocean. So the fact that the Portuguese have a rival, and this rival is a strong Islamic empire, it's kind of something that is a continuity from the past. So are the Portuguese really transforming trade if there was the same continuity of a strong Islamic state? And that's what I highlighted here. So you see right away with two documents, two different ideas about transforming trade. And this should help me read the rest of the document set because I'm either going to be looking for stuff that supports transformation or stuff that shows continuity. So when I get to three, ruler of a Muslim state, he's asking, he realizes that Portuguese are a threat, like they're trying to dominate his place, and Aceh is in Indonesia. It's the northern big island, it's a Muslim island. When, he's, when this sultan is appealing to the Ottoman for help, this is another piece of evidence showing that there is a strong Islamic empire, the Ottomans, that are able to interject into Indian Ocean trade. So that's that kind of lack of transformation or that continuity. So it kind of pairs with document two. So document four, a Muslim scholar from Calicut in southern India. Document four talks about those letters I was talking about, those passes that the merchants have to have or their stuff will be seized by the Portuguese. So if the Portuguese are able to institute this letter system or safe conduct pass, that means they're having an impact, that means they are transforming trade. Mm -hmm. So document four, no dogs, no dogs, no ma'am, got no. Document four pairs with document one, transforming trade. And then lastly is this box that you probably stared at for a while and we're like, what is this box and why is it here? Key thing it says here is these are made to be exported to Portugal. So if Indians in Gujarat are specifically designing a product just for the Portuguese, and it says Portuguese do you really gun hunting, then that's an example of transformation. They transform the economy to produce goods for them. So document five, like document four, and like document one, support transformation. Two and three support this idea that there's still a strong Islamic state. Okay, so you basically have two groups, and these two groups will be your two body paragraphs. I want you to go back and look another pass at this in that initial reading period. When I say reading period, this means when you're brainstorming and you're planning and you're analyzing the documents, not writing the actual essay, but using the sheet I created. When I go back here and I think about sourcing for document one, what jumps out at me right away is Duarte Barbosa, 
is employed by the Portuguese trade post. He's the factor. Okay. So as an official, he wants to make himself look good. The positive aspect of these trading posts being there, the Muslims not being in trade. So is his reliable? Since you know his motivation, his purpose, you can call that into question. Okay. Um, this is early in Portuguese arrival in India. So he's emphasizing the success of the Portuguese in displacing Islam or Islamic merchants in any ways in India. So that's not the situation of what the Portuguese are doing. Look at the document two. The situation is the Ottoman Empire is in conflict with Western nations, with European countries. And they defeated the Byzantine Empire, Christian state in Asia Minor in 1453. They continue that expansion into what's the Balkan regions of Europe, and they come into conflict with Mediterranean powers in the Mediterranean Sea, specifically the sea powers of Portugal and Spain. So that's the historical situation that influences why this Portuguese official would be wary of the Ottoman Empire, because they've already been fighting. Okay? It's a letter of advice, so the purpose is to inform the Portuguese king about the situation and about how the Ottomans pose a threat to Spain's monopoly in the Indian Ocean. Moving quickly on to three, this is a Muslim ruler. Okay. And it's a letter to the Sultan, one Muslim to another. So when they invoke Islam inside here, it's kind of using that uh, religious coming out of the hat between the audience being the, the sultan this time. And it's also, again, appealing to how the Ottomans were successful in fighting European powers. That's the situation. Document four. Document four. He's a religious scholar. So when he sees Portuguese and non-Islamic group coming into the Indian Ocean, displacing Muslim merchants. That religious bias might be evident. That's what I say here on this line. And then it also describes the safe passage passes that I talked about earlier in my brainstorm. That's the historical situation. Document like five, the box talked about this kind of and how on the other side that the situation is there's an increased trade between Portugal and India because of those trade connections. And this box is a, another example of a luxury good. They tell you teak, ebony, precious hardwoods, ivory. So they're trying to appeal to that elite European audience in the way they make this thing. Okay? So what you have done already, and this has taken us about 10 minutes so far, is I've got a full left side, right side, analysis of each document, and I know that I'm going to have two body paragraphs supporting how the Portuguese do tr uh, transform trade, and then the paragraph that shows, well, not as, not as much as we think, okay? So the, four doc or the five documents, you have two that show less of a transformation, and three that show more. So then I would start my argument address this question with what I think is weaker. And the weaker is just two documents that show a continued Islamic presence. The stronger is the transform because there's three documents there. Okay. So I'm going to make this bigger. So we can look at how I did the second page. I'm giving you some examples of contextualization here. A really good print song. Let's crack it up a little bit. So context, I would start my essay. These are two different examples. They both relate the topics of the essay, the Portuguese of Indian Ocean, to broader historical time frame. The first one here is establishing what the Indian Ocean has been for millennia. 
Obviously, context, contextualization needs to be more than just one sentence. It's a summary. I would elaborate on it. Maybe some of the previous travelers in the Marco Polos of the world, Ibn Battuta, maybe some of the empires that existed. This next context is about how the Portuguese were able to make it into India, the Navy notion. So when I brainstormed earlier about Vasco da Gama, I could tell the whole story about the Portuguese starting off in the Atlantic Ocean and then slowly moving down to West Africa in the 1430s, into the southern tip of Africa, the Cape of Good Hope in the 1450s, and then being able to do this because of their advancements with caravels and navigational developments, and then making it to India in 1498. That's all context to get me towards the thesis. So your thesis has to take a position. We saw in the documents the position is that although there was strong Islamic presence with the Ottoman Empire in the Indian Ocean trade, the Portuguese do transform more than they don't. Okay? And that this sentence kind of this thesis example shows you those two basic groups competing with the Ottoman Empire but also transform it, okay? So my first paragraph, continue to the past and therefore not transforming, continue to a strong Islamic presence. That's kind of my sub-thesis or topic sentence. Putting document two and three in there because of the presence of the Ottoman Empire opposing the Portuguese, okay? Document two, Ottomans want to negotiate with the Portuguese as equals, document three, those that militarily is an ally of Aceh. Outside evidence I have to support this idea of a strong Islamic presence. I could bring up the Ottomans, as I did earlier, rivalries in the Mediterranean. There's a famous battle called Lepanto. The Spanish actually won it, but it's still this idea they have an opponent. I could look at another gunpowder empire, the Safavid in Persia, is also being out there to try to stop uh, European advances because they, this outside evidence goes to support these documents and not transforming not being as, as, as wide spread. Okay. To extend this argument, I want to talk more about the Ottoman. Now, the Ottoman strength in the Indian Ocean is paralleled by their strength in North Africa and Southern Europe. In fact, they're so strong in opposing European powers that they are able to invade Austria until 1683. Vienna is the capital of Austria today, and the Ottomans have controlled most of that area before their decline in the 20th century, or the 19th century, and then the 20th century. So my second body paragraph is going to be supporting that they do transform the Indian trade zones. One, three, and four are the document evidence for that. Document one talks about the decline in Muslim merchants. Document four shows a successful enforcement of the Portuguese trade pass showing that they have a monopoly. And then pot five shows that Indians are making items for export to Portugal. It's a new trade that is transformed by Portuguese tactics. Evidence from the outside of the documents. How can they do it? The cause of this transformation, navigational technologies, armed sh ships, um, Decline in South Asia as well, with declining Delhi Sultanates, regional kingdoms developed until the Mughal gets strong later. It supports a reason for the decline and then therefore transformation by the Portuguese. How do I extend that argument? How do the Portuguese transform trade elsewhere? Talk about what they do in Brazil, West Africa. They get to Japan first, they get to China first. They'll be the first to what's today Indonesia and Malaysia. So they have a pattern of transforming trade. And this evidence argument extension will show that. So from what I've done in these two body paragraphs, going back to the rubric, I've got three points for evidence. I've used five of five documents, so that's at least two. There's one point. My evidence from each document is supporting evidence for supporting the argument, so that gives me another point. I got four, and since I went above the minimum of two and got to four, I've got all three points here. I've got 
evidence from outside the documents, the Ottoman presence and successes in rivaling in Europe. And I've got outside evidence either the Portuguese advances or the decline in Indian Muslim empires. So actually I have three pieces of outside evidence. And that will give me together two points for outside evidence. Three points for inside evidence, evidence within the documents. That gives me all five. So I've got my context, I've got my thesis, I've got all five points for evidence, because I'll use these two. I have argument support from all five, and then I have three pieces of outside evidence to be able to actually show you that. Don't need a third body paragraph. Okay, I just need those two. My conclusion, obviously you know how to restate a thesis, so you need two source analyses. And how are those analyses relevant to the argument about the prompt? Okay. So I took from my left side analysis, just examples from documents four and one, because I just need two. If you look at the rubric, analysis and reasoning, Two points explaining how or why the documents evidence is relevant to an argument. You twice and you get two points. That would get us up to nine. So I explain here how that being a Muslim scholar, he's hostile to the Portuguese trade pass system, he uses words like persecution, unjust. Okay. And then for document one. The government official would want to emphasize the positive effects of trading posts because he would be promoting his role in the process because he's one of those factors in a trade post. So that's influences the argument. So that gives me the two sourcing points on the rubric. All that's left with is a complex understanding of complexity, the unicorn point. And what I did in each body paragraph is I did a relevant and insightful connection within and across periods. So I'm within the period. I am up here doing the Ottoman role in Europe, in Africa, not just the Ottoman role in the Indian Ocean, which is what the argument's about, but it extends that argument. And then I'm extending how the Portuguese don't just transform inside of the Indian Ocean, they transform in Brazil, they transform in West Africa, Japan, China. In the rubric, that would get me the last point we're looking for the complexity. It gets us all the way 10 to 10. And all of this is accomplished on this two page planner. This video is probably 15 20 minutes. Obviously, this is longer than you would do on the actual essay because I'm having to explain. But if you could give your, if you could do this in 15 minutes and then write to DBQ in 30, you get a 10. Okay, so I hope this has helped a little bit. If you're doing these kind of planning documents, watch your writing essay with two more questions that I show you guys in the coming weeks. Thanks, adios.